Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. 10 out of Jake, I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Big shout out once again to everybody that's blowing up the Instagram. I only need like a couple more hundred people. I had that 10K. That's the goal right now. So big shout out to everybody that's been following me, all the new followers and everybody that's been rocking with me. This video right here, I'm going to really mess y'all heads up with this one, right? This is about somebody that I knew. This is about somebody that helped me out in a couple of situations. The ending is really just going to mess y'all heads up, right? This video right here is about an insane gangster disciple, a 974. Now, I don't talk about the GDs. I don't talk about a BD that rolled out with me, BD Black Disciple. The GDs are the gangster disciples. He was an insane gangster disciple. So they kind of just renegade, bang on anybody, do their own thing. At least that's what I know. That's what I was told by him. This video right here is about a guy named Kid. Now, Kid... I met him at Appalachia CI, R4. You know, Bimba was my bunkie at the time. And um, Kid ended up getting put into one bottom. He was in one bottom, I was in two bottom. Now, Kid, this insane gangster disciple, this was the guy that I told in the previous story when I got into it with my people and I couldn't get Bimba's knife, I went and got a knife from the GD. The knife was like this big. The name of the knife was Demon. I got this knife from Kid. This is who I'm talking about, right? Also, in the Robbery Gone Bad video, I spoke on how when the GD from Chicago ran off into his room, they robbed him for all his shit, but they didn't get the electric razor, whatever, whatever, and a GD came up and actually gave me the electric razor. This was also Kid. Everybody, you know, you can kind of tell by looking at Kid. I mean, he's all tatted up. He's completely tatted up. His face is really sunken in, though, right? He he looks kind of sick. And um, I heard rumors that he was stabbing shit up. He's got a huge scar on his head where he said he got hit with a knife at another compound. But I never seen him actually get into action before. I knew he stayed with a big knife. And, you know, his people said he was verified, right? He said that he was, he had a direct line to, I believe it was Chicago, um, you know, through his gang, through 974, Insane Gangster Disciples. You know, he's certified from the street, this, that, and the third, right? I remember Kid got into it. It wasn't with anyone in particular, right? When you bay check, when something happens, whether your stuff goes missing or you think somebody touched something or whatever, you bay check. So bay check, bay check. You yell it out to the whole dorm. You get everyone in the dorm's attention and you say what you got to say. So apparently his headphones went missing. He didn't know where the headphones were at. So he went to bay checking. You know what I mean? He yells out, bay check, bay check. Who got my headphones? Nobody's saying nothing. Listen, I'm going to ask one more time. Who got my headphones? If you return it, it isn't going to be a problem. I'll walk away from my cell. I'll walk up to the window, have my back to the dorm, put my stuff back on my bunk. And when I come back, if I see my headphones, it's all good. So he did that. He walked over to the window. You know what I mean? Stood there. And everybody's watching to see if anybody goes to his door. Nobody did. You know what I mean? He comes back, he bay checks again, you feel me? This time when he bay checks, he says, if he sees anybody with their headphones, he's going to kill them. When you hear somebody make an announcement like that, you know things just got serious, you know what I mean? And we all knew that he had this huge knife, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all knew about it. And uh, he actually, he used to have a magnet on the knife, so when he sat down at the table... He would put the knife onto the magnet and magnetize it to the bottom of the table so the knife is sitting there the whole time. So if there's a problem, he can just grab it and boom, he's got a huge knife on him. He's ready to go. So, I mean, all of a sudden, he just starts yelling out. He's like, oh, y'all think it's a game. Y'all think I'm playing. I did 260 days on death row. I'm not scared to go back. I will kill you and rape you after I kill you. And we heard that and we're just like, what? Like, what did he, like, er, this just took a turn for the worst. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've said in other videos, though. 
The GDs in Florida State Prison have a bad name. Why? They have a lot of homosexual activity within their organization, which is normally frowned upon by every single organization. There's only one. It's a Spanish organization that allows that. I'm not going to put them out there. If you know, you know. But the GDs in Florida State Prison, they get down. And there usually isn't an issue with that. And he was actually bunkies with his girlfriend so in prison they're called boys you know what i mean dude had his eyebrows tweezed everything it was a mess and um it's it's crazy because dudes will portray themselves as full-blown gangsters and they entertain homosexual activities you know what i'm saying there's a lot of booty bandits that are known for being straight killers straight savages like you're not gonna tell them they're gay they're gonna kill you you know what i'm saying and um, that was the situation with him. His bunkie was his boy. And, you know, he yells out, I'll kill you and rape you afterwards. And it got everybody's attention. And come to find out, it was his boy that left the headphones in his locker. So he brings him back out. Kid gets him in the room, starts smacking him. You know what I'm saying? And dude talks to him like, I mean, yeah. Like he does the whole, you know what I'm saying? It's It's a big role. But to hear that, though, to hear him threaten just to the general, oh, I did 260 on death row. You only go on death row if you kill somebody. So basically what he's saying is I'll kill again, you know, and he had a life sentence. So everybody assumed it was for a body. He got into it with someone else at one point in time uh, where he showed the knife pretty much to everybody. There was a guy on the top tier. A old head, right? A old black dude from, you know, Broward County or whatever. And kid's boy, his, you know, girlfriend, once again, was in the shower. The showers, it's like a it's like a walk-in shower with a bad door. You know, you just go in, whatever. There's like four showers, one on the top, one on the bottom. And um the old guy was looking in the shower, looking at kid's boy. You know, and kid was sitting down at the table downstairs. He peeped game. So what did he do? He waited until the old guy went inside of the shower. When he went into the shower and got naked, kid ran up there, ripped open the bar door because they don't lock. You just swing them and then hold them in a position. You know what I'm saying? Swings open the door, pulls out the huge knife, and he basically checks the dude for looking at his boy. Like, are you... Are you looking at my boy? You got a problem? You're going to disrespect me like that? I'm going to kill you right here in the shower. Oh, no, no, no. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. A lot of people don't understand, you know, people will make jokes on the street about homosexuals and homosexual activity inside a prison. That was one of the number one reasons people were getting stabbed, especially at Appalachia. It had to do with gangs, gambling, and gays. The three G's of prison is relevant in every single prison system. If you're involved with one of those three G's, you're most likely going to run into some issues. And I mean, that was the first time we seen him, you know, go at somebody, like calling him out, knife in his hands, ready to go. But the guy that he called out folded, he said he didn't want smoke, he didn't want a problem, whatever, right? Now, at some point in time, a crip got moved to Appalachia. And I mean, this dude, he was gigantic, huge guy with a crazy reputation in prison. Like he was known in prison. I mean, he stepped to the head crip on the rec yard and said, I'm taking over the head. I'm taking it over. It's mine. Because, you know, there was a couple of crips that was engaging in a homosexual activity because, you know, the crips and the GDs, they usually tie flags inside of prison. The second this dude get here, I think it was his second day, he bucked 50 one of the crips on the child hall line. Walked right up to him, boom, split him. So it was that crip, it was a Spanish GD, and then I think it was a Spanish, I'm not sure, it was some Spanish gang from Miami, I forget what it was. And they just teamed up and just started splacking everybody that wasn't rocking correctly. So they cut that one crip, they stabbed up another one on the way outside of Chow. They ran down, all three of them started poking them up. They were just hitting everybody up. And then they started to hit up the GDs. I remember I was in Chow. And this is like, I don't know, maybe like two weeks or a week before I go home. I come out from Chow and I see the cage. The cage is right in front of where the white dude 
killed the other white dude, right? Right at center gate, there's a cage on each side. Only time you get put in a cage is like if you're gonna go to confinement or something, unless it's call outs or something like that. But obviously because we're doing child right now, if you're in the cage, it's because you did something, you got in trouble. So I walk past the cage and I see kid. And he's in the cage handcuffed, hands behind his back. And I look at him, I'm like, damn bro, what happened? And he just looks at me and he's like, and I just remember he just had like this sad puppy dog look in his face. Like all the gangster just, it wasn't there. The same dude that I saw run down on Buddy in the shower with a knife. The same guy that was like, oh, I was on death row. I did, da -da. I did this. I got life. I don't care about killing. He just didn't have that energy. When I got back to the dorm, I found out kid went PC. They knew that he was an official GD and that, you know, he was doing things he shouldn't have been doing and they were gonna hit him up. They were gonna hit up the boy, the boy went PC. Which brings me back to how his face was sunken in. There was a rumor that he had AIDS. You gotta think, when you got somebody that's flamboyant and willing to give it up and it's not a, a rape thing, it's they're willing to do so, they're doing this with multiple people on the compound. You know what I mean? So when one of them is sick, they're spreading that disease to multiple people. And now all of them are getting sick. You might have someone that's had the same disease for 20 years, giving it to somebody that just turned 20 years old. You know what I mean? You can't fight those type of people. You don't want to fight them. And that's kind of what made Kid dangerous in a sense, because you knew you couldn't fight him. You had to stab him. And you don't want that blood near you either. So there's just a lot of different elements and things you got to think of. But this is somebody that's supposed to be insane gangster disciple. Went straight PC. Told everybody he was on death row. When I got out, I looked him up. All of that was fake. Kid was never on death row. He had a bunch of burglary, robbery charges back in the 90s. He went back to prison basically on the same thing. Burglaries, robberies, and escape. He's got a ton of charges. He has a life sentence, but he never killed anybody. He was never on death row. It was all made up. Prison is be all you can be. You got people that come into prison that have never done nothing to nobody in their life. And when they get into prison, they'll tell you the illest stories about how they killed this person and killed that person because there's no way to verify it. You know what I mean? People come in there and they'll tell you that. They're this big gangster, and in fact, they're nobody. And you really can't listen to them. You really can't trust them. You might think somebody's a killer, and now he's going PC. It's a crazy world to live in. And I mean, I spoke with Kid a couple of times. A CO that was giving me cigarettes, he was cool with her too. And, you know, we sat down and he told me. I was like, what are you trying to get out of her? Because at the same time, I'm trying to figure out what he's doing. If he's interfering with me getting money, because I'm getting cigarettes. If we're both getting cigarettes off the same person, you're interfering with my money because what you got could have went to me. He's like, look, I don't ask her for nothing. I don't want cigarettes. I don't want drugs. You can have all that. I just want a baby. He wanted to get her pregnant. And he told me why. He said, I got a life sentence and I don't have any kids. I have nobody to carry on my name or my bloodline. If I die in prison, my bloodline dies with me. And that hit me hard. That was a reason why I wanted to have a child when I got out. So that I wouldn't ever find myself in a situation like he's in. You know what I mean? And even though he turned out to be poison, he turned out to be PC, he was food, whatever. I still learned something off of him. And it was something that still stuck with me to this day, to be grateful that I now have a daughter and to be grateful that I'm not in the position that he's in. So even though I would never affiliate with him again, I still was able to learn something positive from him. And that's really what I want y'all to get out of this message. I, I found a dude I thought was solid. I thought was this and that. Found out he was entertaining things he shouldn't have been. That was a red flag. Come to find out he goes PC. Come to find out everything he said was a lie. And you can't believe everybody, bro. But that's the reality of prison. That's why you need to stay out of prison, man. It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all. Let y'all rocking with me. Till next time.